Hello again, this is another video about train update. So what is new in this version? The new feature added to mTrain is that you can now add grass without using any external data, just with some math logic. The tree you see here are generated the same way. There are other improvements in this version. One of the biggest is much faster loading time for train and also the chunk loading at runtime. So let me show you how you can add grass using logic. Before creating the train, you need to choose a different mode for grass. The data mode works the same as before. Now we have also two additional modes, a script virtual, which you use when adding grass with GD script, and virtual, which you use when you adding grass through GD extension. I'm choosing the script virtual in this case. Inside the script for my grass, I enable tool mode, so the script also run in editor. If you don't do this, it won't work inside the editor. Now we need to overwrite the getGrass function to return something. This function has two input, x and y, which represent the pixel coordinate of the grass cell. Basically, this function asks whether the cell at x and y should have grass or not. You answer by returning true or false. If you return true, it will add grass on that cell. If you return false, that cell will remain empty. For example, here I return true for all x values equal to 10. Now, if I go to the start of my train in my scene, you can see that the trees are added there. Now, let's change this to 20. To recreate tree, just press on recreate all grass button in the grass inspector. And there we go, trees are moved. Now imagine we want to add grass and trees at the current camera position. How we can do that? For this, we need to perform some calculation. If you run those calculation on ready function, they won't work. Instead, use one of these signals. There are two signals for grass. Grass init, which will emit it after the train is ready and all of the parameter of the grass is set. Grass ready will be emitted after all the grass cell has been added to the scene. In this case, I want to use grass in it because it is emitted before grass is added to the scene. So we can use our virtual function to place the grass at the start. So I add a variable for the pixel position and I also grab the camera node. Basically, we want to convert the camera global position into the grass pixel position or cell position. We can use get closest pixel function in the grass class which convert the global position to the grass pixel position. One thing to note is that if you use this function for different grass node, you may get different coordinate because it depends on each grass cell size. But you don't need to worry about this. This function handle all the internal mass for you. Now I can use this pixel coordinate to create my trees. And here are my trees. Before, when we used grass data, we could set the cell size in the grass data resource. But now, as we are not using grass data, we can change the cell size here. Just note that after changing it, you need to restart the train for changes to take effect. In the real world situation, I don't use this method for trees. Because with this approach, you can't paint the grass anymore and I want more control over my trees. But this method works well with things like uh, small rocks. Here you can see I have added some small rock randomly on the train and also I prevent them from being placed on the area with a steep slope. So this is the script for the small rock grass. So in this script, first I convert the x and y coordinate in the grass coordinate system to the grid coordinate system, which is used by the train. Then I get the normal of the train at that position. Finally, if the y component of the train normal is less than a certain threshold, I return false, preventing rock from being placed there. So before I end this video, I need to tell three more things. First, let's talk about the performance. This method performs well as long as your logic isn't too complicated. Be aware that the getGrass function is called for only for the grass cell that need to be rendered. It won't be called for all grass cells in the entire world. 
Also, the cell size has an exponential effect on the performance. The smaller the cell size, the more often get grass function will be called because the total number of the cell will be increased. By the way, this won't reduce your FPS since it's run on a separate thread. The only effect is that the train and the grass update will happen less frequently. Another important thing to note is that the get grass function is called in a separate thread. So be careful. Don't modify global variable inside the get grass function. As that can crash to your game because changing the value in two different CPU threads at the same time can be dangerous. Finally, the logic inside get grass should always retain the same value for the same X and Y coordinate. And that was it about this new update of the M train. I hope you liked this video. Have a good time. Until the next video. Bye.